Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. Um, it's been a while since I did anything Witcher related and I'm still working on something in the Witcher 3. But uh, in the meantime, I've been hesitating to make a few videos in Gwent because I really like the game. Um, if you don't know what Gwent is, Gwent was the mini game card game inside of the Witcher 3 that has now been transformed into a completely different standalone game. It's uh, really nice, nicely done with uh, special animations for all the cards, uh, special new rules, especially if you compare it to what it was in The Witcher 3, and it's highly addictive. I've been playing a lot of it lately, and I've been trying to figure out what kind of videos I can make. Uh, to put this in context, in a few months they will publicly release Gwent, so CD Projekt Red is going to publicly re release Gwent and it's going to have a single player campaign. To prepare for that a bit, they've been sporadically giving us um, some single player events for specific times of the year. So we had one for Halloween, we had one uh, before that, but I don't know what event that was for. But now for the Christmas holidays and New Year's Eve and, and everything like that, we have the Midwinter Hunt. These single player events are uh, actually mini stories played out by uh, Gwent Games. And how that plays out, I'm going to show you in a minute. We're going to do Midwinter Hunt. As you can see, we're almost running out of time to even do this one. I did it completely already, but I just want to show you this and uh, let it play out. So help Geralt hunt the Phoenix. So this is how it looks. So we have three events into difficulty modes. We're gonna do the expert mode. And um, to give you a bit more of an explanation, these events are little side stories, so just little short stories on their own, which is actually pretty fitting because the first two books of The Witcher are also just a collection of short stories. So it actually fits in rather nicely. But this one, the night of the winter solstice, midden Vern, in the language of the elves, is a time when the borders between worlds blur and the air shimmers with wild magic. Folks spend this evening together exchanging presents while witchers roll up their sleeves and get to work. So the first event in this one is Treacherous Passage. And I don't have to do the explaining because there's actually full voiced, fully voiced uh, storytelling in every single one of these events, so enjoy. You've no doubt heard tell of Geralt of Rivia, of the sorceresses he bedded, the beasts he slew, but not, I wager, of the phoenix he hunted. No? Thought as much. For the Witcher did not like to speak of it, with good reason. It began with a Coveri magnate, Mikulus Clyman, who posted a contract on a phoenix prowling the mountains near his home. He offered a fortune to whoever would kill it. Soon, the greatest bounty hunters and swashbucklers descended on Kovir. Among them, our Witcher. Wasting no time, they trekked into the mountains. So the first part of this event, the first game we're gonna play, is Treacherous Passage. So we need to get to where the Phoenix is, alongside a few other bounty hunters. So let's start the battle and see how this plays out. Watch out. Easy to fall here. So, as I said, there are uh, fully voiced lines by the original voice, voice actors here, which means that um, everything will also play out as you would expect in the normal game. There are no timers, I think, uh, in single player, so I have a bit of time to uh, explain all this. So we have Jotun, King of Giants, as our uh, adversary, and as we check out his card, uh, he moves three enemies to the opposite row and deals two damage to them. If that row is under frost, deal three damage instead. I'll do a basic explanation of what Gwent is about. The basic premise is that there are three rounds, but this is not going to be happening in the single player events. But the idea is simple. You have to end the round with more points than your opponent. So right now, the uh, Jotun King of Giants has 24 points and we have zero. Um, each row, uh, each side of the board has three rows which you can put units on and uh, right now our two top rows are under frost which means the lowest unit on those rows will every time get uh, damaged. So we need to be smart about this. We have a few cards. Our bottom row 
is a precipice, so if any of our units get pulled into that, they're immediately destroyed. For what we have in our hand, we have Geralt Igni, which allows us to destroy the highest units on an enemy row if that row has a total of 25 or more, which we're gonna use pretty quickly because uh, there's one row with 24 on it, and that's gonna improve in a second. So, as a start, we have two swordsmen, a uh, great swordsman, uh, who reset themselves every turn if they're damaged and strengthen themselves by two. So you would think that those would be a nice start. But uh, we'll see what else we have. We have Swallow, which boosts the unit by 10. And then we have uh, two clan archers, which uh, can deal one damage to three units each. And then Jenge Fret, which is the bounty hunter, the leader of the bounty hunters we're uh, following right now. So it's actually fitting in the story. So we can destroy up to three damaged units. So we're going to keep the damage uh, later on in Jenge Fret as well later on so we're gonna have to start with a clan great sword we're gonna put them as high as we can because if they uh, get blow. pushed up one row if we're on the middle row we're gonna die so there we go i think for now we're gonna have to boost the top great swordsman by 10 just to allow it to survive because although it might actually reset so let's try and put another swordsman down and no, you know what? Let's just use Geralt Igni because I'm going to do that anyway. So uh, destroy the highest units on a row, which is portals. highest units, which means there are three of 12, which are all the highest units. So destroy them all three. Shitecakes! Think you've made a mod? So in between the rounds, we're also getting uh, voice lines. So that was Chengi Fred, who you might remember from The Witcher 3, because he has a slight cameo over there. Oh! Got him on dine. There we go. There we go once again. So that means we lose health on the lowest unit. Um, for now, that means Geralt, because he's the lowest unit on the row. And then dual an enemy is the ice troll. If it's under frost, deal double damage. We're gonna throw another Glan greatsword on the row, which means we're gonna. Hmm. You no, know I'm just gonna boost Geralt with ten for now. Because I want to wait what comes next. I kind of know what comes next, but it's been a while. There we go. So the Ice Troll loses from Geralt. And then we can put the uh, Clan Greatsword on its row again. Because I know there's a few rocks they're going to show throw at us. So there we go. Um, I think we're going to lose it next turn. So we might as well... Hmm. Let's just boost it and see what happens. I think we're going to lose it next turn. That's not too bad because we can uh, damage the upper units in a second. So there we go. The boulder damages it for seven. Peppering us with stones. And makes it drop one row. So that means we only have the archers and Jengi Fret left. But the archers can damage Jotun and the ice troll we still have on the board. And then we can see what happens next, because I think it's another rock, yeah? So that drops it down one and kills it immediately. And then we have another archer damaging the units. And I think the last one should also be a rook. Yeah, there we go. So that just kills it, leaving us with Jenge Fret, which is who is going to save the day by destroying three damaged me. units, in this case two. Not far now. Stay close. I don't trust witchcraft, but I'm glad you're on our side. So there we go. Won the round and the first game is over. We won from uh, Jotun, King of Giants. So next up in this uh, storyline is we need to, well, reach the uh, Phoenix. So next up, we're going to actually fight the Phoenix itself. So fire and ice. The Phoenix was not the sole beast to dwell in those mountains. But Geralt did not bear his silver sword for show. With the other bounty hunters' help, he slew a host of icy creatures. Then the expedition moved off towards the snowbound peaks. The phoenix evaded them for long. Yet in the end, cornered, it spread its wings and attacked. So there we go, the phoenix is in our reach, but it now has attacked. And uh, we're gonna have to deal with that beast, so let's start the battle. Follow me. 
But nobody plays the hero, got it? Come on! Chop the chicken! Chop the chicken, because yeah, the phoenix is a bird, of course, but a fiery bird at that. So, in normal mode, it's already pretty easy to take down the uh, phoenix, but we have a bit of a difference here. We have different cards than we would otherwise. Um, and the phoenix has a lot more armor than it should have. Our cards have changed up a bit. Uh, we have Jangi Frat as our leader now, we, who can still destroy damaged enemies. But before we can damage the uh, phoenix, we need to get through its armor. We have Biting Frost, which we've seen in effect in the previous round. Then Decoy, who, uh, which we can use to replay uh, a card. Then we have two Resurrectors, the Priestesses of Freya. Don't know how they got up the mountain, but they are here. And then three Marauders who can deal four damage, but if they're resurrected, they can deal six damage. The Phoenix does not have any attacks, so we just need to play our cards in the right order. Which we're gonna start, of course, with Biting Frost right over there. So Frost takes down two damage, well, deals two damage every round, so that's gonna be a nice setup to start with. Then, it's a bit weird, but the way that this, this is set up is that we need to discard our Marauders. We can actually select a card since the update and then discard it instead of play it, which is what we're gonna do. There we go. So that means it's discarded. We're gonna do that again, which is really weird because we're just tossing away units. But then we're gonna play one of the Marauders, Are dealing damage, so dealing four damage. Speak to him. The Frost is still ticking down, so we're at 16 armor now. Let's resurrect one Bow of the Marauders, which means we Are now deal 6 damage. There we go. We can resurrect another one, we serve her dealing another 6 damage. Control. And because this isn't even on Expert, this is pretty doable. So now we only need to decoy one card. And now we're actually going to do uh, more damage than Better expected, because we're going to even damage it completely. I think we even win this round just by damage alone because we can even if we just play Jangi fret without destroying the phoenix we have 36 versus the 34 so it's actually pretty easy to just play this on uh, expert but there goes We're the phoenix and there we go that's one big bird Wouldn't really need that many feathers for a dress wait Want to kill it for feathers so somebody can make a dress? So there we go. The little plot twist in this quest is that they don't want to kill it because it's, uh, well, damaging property or killing people. They want to kill it because the feathers, uh, well, the, the daughter of the, uh, the man we're doing this for, wants to make a dress out of phoenix feathers. So Geralt is... Um, not so pleased with that because he's just there to kill monsters that are harming people if you read the books or played any of the games we know Geralt often takes the sides of monsters that are sentient are not harming anybody so unexpected ally Geralt learned the Phoenix had not done anyone any harm no Nicholas Kleiman had posted the notice for an altogether trivial reason he wished to present his wife with a dress adorned with the beast's feathers for Middenvern. Geralt had sworn never to harm sentient creatures that were no threat to humans. So he sided with the avian that had been brought down. Some of the bounty hunters joined him, but not all. So now we have a disagreement between Jenge Fret and Geralt. And Geralt has got the support of a few of the bounty hunters. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to defend the phoenix now. Creature hasn't harmed anyone. Not about to let you kill it. Lads! Witcher's gone mad! At him! So, even though the game just told us that a few of the bounty hunters sided with us, that's Why not actually that gonna happen. For this? So, uh, a bit different. We have a special Geralt card in our, uh, well, pouch right now. Geralt gains the power and ability of one of the Geralt cards in the game, and after two turns he returns to your hand. Which means we can, well, while this game is going on, we can use Geralt continuously with different kind of effects. So we're gonna play him immediately, and then we're gonna use Urden, which is usually used in an offensive way to reset units, 
but resetting also heals units. So if you use Let's Urdent, dance. think you can take us all, freak? I think we can. So we lose health, but we can actually use Urdent to reset the health of the Phoenix. I promise you a quick deal. So Jengi Fret in here is still a very real threat because if the Phoenix dies, we lose the match. And of course, Jenge still has the ability to destroy damaged units. So as long as the Phoenix is destroyed, we're at risk. Well, if damaged, we're at risk at losing this match. So let's just use Swallow on the Phoenix, which, which gives us a bit more time. There we go. So 15, which that means he doesn't have enough damage to get it down immediately. So now we can use Geralt. To actually perform a different Let's get task. This over with. So deal three damage to three enemies and move them to the row above, which would be really handy, isn't it? So let's just use uh, Ard and just push back the enemies and damage them. There we go. So now it's up to Jenge to decide what his next move is going to be. We also have the Mandrake Root uh, card, which we can use in two specific, well, different um, terms. We can either heal a unit and strengthen it by six, or reset a unit and weaken it by six. Um, right now we're just going to keep using Swallow as an intermediary to heal the Phoenix. Because we're uh, gaining on the health level of the Phoenix, which means it can actually survive Mario another attack and just keep going. Again, Geralt is back in our hands, which means Not we can just push back more enemies with Art. There we go. And I think we can do it just like this. And destroy most of the enemies over there. So we're still in the advantage. The Phoenix is good on health, but probably we will lose off. another one. Um, we're going to use Swallow again. And now we're at 18, which means if they're only Marauders, we can actually survive everything now. Because Jengi can't actually do any damage. There we go. 7, which only gets him to 11. So now we can actually use Geralt to push back again, I think. Because we can use him at the very end one more time, if I remember correctly. So there we go, 9 damage, and we're pretty much home free right now. Uh, let's go! Hard time to see if the tales about you are tall or true. Come here and find out. So, final round. This is all about points now. So 22 points versus the 17 we have, but the Mandrake route gives us 6 more points. So let's heal a unit and strengthen it by six. There we go. So now we're already above it, but we get Geralt back. And Geralt has his uh, default form, which Not is actually just day. 15 points, which wins us the match easily. Get out of here and don't come back ever. So yeah, there's a few ways of completing this, but that finishes the storyline. We defeated Jenge and his remaining bounty hunters and uh, defended the Phoenix from harm. Geralt held his own and saved the Phoenix from a most undeserved death. The bird bowed its head in a gesture of gratitude, then flew off into the wild blue yonder. As the Witcher left Kovir, he pledged to read his contracts more carefully in the future. And... Nicholas Kleiman? Desperate, he gave his wife a note redeemable at any jeweler's shop in Lan Exeter, which contented her immensely. So there we go, all's well that ends well. Geralt defeated the bounty hunters but didn't kill them. The Phoenix survived and uh, Nicholas Kleiman gave his wife, uh, well, a redeemable note for the jeweler's shop. So there we go, that's one of the story events in uh, Gwent. I might do a few more videos on Gwent if I get the chance. I'm just trying to see what else I can do with it uh, in the state that it's in, because right now I can only do, of course, play against other people if I want to. If you want to see that, just please let me know in the comments down below, because uh, I'm actually getting to be rather good at this game. But thank you guys normally for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't, um, well, don't despair, because uh, in a few months, 
CD Projekt Red is supposed to release a full single player campaign. So there's going to be a lot more of these videos. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And uh, see you guys soon. Goodbye. Okay,